Section one of Stories for God's Little Ones by Father John Koenig. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Maria Therese. The Boy Who Was Afraid in the Dark. I won't tell you where he lived. It would really surprise you. And I won't tell you his real name, because I think you would know him. So suppose we call him Jimmy. Jimmy was the boy who was afraid in the dark, so afraid that his mother had to sit by his bed till he fell asleep and had to leave the bright ceiling light burning all night long. Oh, often his mother tried to teach him to be brave in the dark. I heard her myself many times. Not long ago I heard her telling him at bedtime, Remember, Jimmy, God's everywhere. She paused to let everywhere bounce around in Jimmy's thoughts. Then she added, And you know where everywhere is. Jimmy nodded and said, Everywhere is all over. And that means, Jimmy, that God's right here, his mother went on. Please try to remember. A wrinkle jumped on Jimmy's forehead, and he asked, But is he in the dark, too? Even in the darkest dark, answered his mother, and he sees us and loves us and watches over us. But Jimmy wouldn't learn. That's why I knew it was going to happen. And sure enough, it did. One dark, stormy night, the light in Jimmy's room flickered and burned out. There was a loud clap of thunder, and Jimmy awoke. His room was so dark it was like waking up in a bottle of ink. Did Jimmy do as his mother told him? Did he try to remember that God was with him and watching over him? Sorry to say, he didn't. Rather, he let himself become scared. Not just a little scared but very, very scared, and then much more scared till, all of a sudden, it happened. Jimmy let himself get so scared that he became scared stiff, so stiff that he couldn't move. His knees became locked, his head couldn't turn, his elbows couldn't bend. If it weren't for the fact he could still breathe and still swallow and still open his eyes, you would have thought he was just a big piece of cardboard. So it was his mother found him in the morning, stiff as a piece of cardboard. I wish you could have seen how his mother tried to help him. First she rushed to the bathroom cabinet for the bottle of alcohol. She rubbed his legs up and down and under and over, but they wouldn't move. Then she put an electric pad on his elbows, but they just wouldn't bend. Then she dashed for the heat lamp and turned it on full force. But all with no success. She couldn't get Jimmy loosened up again. Just picture what a sight he made at the breakfast table. He couldn't sit in his usual chair, because he couldn't bend. He couldn't pick up the cereal spoon, nor reach for the toast, nor lift the glass of orange juice. So his mother had to stand him against the table and feed him. Once the strawberry jam on his toast brushed against his nose, and he couldn't lift his hand to wipe it off. Jimmy was solidly stiff. And it was worse right after breakfast when his playmates came in to play. He couldn't bounce his rubber ball. He couldn't pile his building toys. He couldn't color his picture books. When his playmates began to play ping pong, he could only stand by the side of the table. Once the ping pong ball hit him on the side of the head and bounced off into the fish bowl. Now that would happen only to a boy who had gotten scared stiff. That night it was more of the same. Jimmy couldn't kneel to say his night prayers, nor could he jump into bed. So his mother propped him up against the side of the bed while he said his night prayers. She had to make his sign of the cross because he couldn't bless himself. As soon as the sign of the cross was finished, she said, Now remember, Jimmy, God's real close, and he's just as close in the dark. Jimmy's ears were stiff, but it's good to say he could hear every word his mother said. Jimmy's mother placed him flat on his back in the bed. As she pulled the covers up to his chin, she added, and remember, God loves you and is watching over you. With that, she smoothed out Jimmy's blanket, and there he lay, stiff as a newly made ice cube. That was how it happened that Jimmy became scared stiff, and nothing could loosen him up again. Well, during the night, Jimmy slept soundly, of course without any turns or bends. Suddenly the light in the ceiling began to grow dim. I should tell you that it wasn't a brand new light. It had been taken from the ceiling in his mother's room. Then, flicker and poof, it too burned out. Once again, Jimmy's room was in darkness. 
No one knows yet why Jimmy suddenly awoke. I think maybe his guardian angel stirred him in some gentle way, because without any warning, Jimmy awoke. He looked straight up at the ceiling. He was so stiff that was the only way he could look. But the light was out and the room was very dark, deep tunnel dark. In fact, night time had coated Jimmy's room with seven layers of darkness. Jimmy could have gotten scared and panicky all over again. He could have, but he didn't. This time he remembered what his mother had told him. So right off he said, Dear God, I'm not afraid because you're here with me in the dark and watching over me. With that, he felt something twist in his knee, and, by golly, he could bend it as much as he wanted. Then something twisted in his neck, and, goodness me, he could turn his head any way he wished. Then something twisted in his elbow, and, happy days, he could touch his face again. As quickly as that, he was all loosened up again, and a mighty happy fellow, you can bet. The next morning, his mother walked into his room at the usual time. Jimmy was waiting quietly, the covers up to his chin. His mother looked up at the ceiling and saw the light was out. She uttered, one on top of the other, Oh dear, oh dear. But that was as far as she got, because in one mighty leap, Jimmy jumped out of bed and threw his arms around her and hugged her tight. Happy tears came running down her face. Now Jimmy's mother no longer sits by his bed at night, no longer is the bright ceiling light kept burning, and, happy to say, months have passed away, and Jimmy hasn't been stiff even once. Oh, sometimes he might begin to get scared in the dark, but then he remembers that God is everywhere, even in the dark, and that blows the scare away. And that's the best place for it, don't you think? End of The Boy Who Was Afraid in the Dark